Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to introduce a very simple piece of legislation to repeal the infamous Section 1021 of the National Defense Authorization Act, quietly signed into law by the President on New Year's Day. What a way to usher in the new year. Yes, that is Ron Paul on the House floor on this Wednesday, January 18, 2012. He left the campaign trail just days ahead of the South Carolina primary to do something even more important, fight for our liberties, introducing a bill to repeal the 1021 provision of the NDAA National Authorization Act which allowed for the indefinite detention of even American citizens, all without trial, without due process, all of it. Kurt Nemo has the article. He describes that Ron Paul has serious reservations despite Obama's issuing a signing statement declaring he will not use the law to detain Americans. You mean the signing statement that is not only repugnant to the Constitution in its attempt to skirt the law he signed, but it, which is also not legally binding and gives false assurances? That signing statement, the double whammy deception? Yeah, Paul said in December in an interview that the bill will accelerate the country's slip into tyranny and virtually assures our descent into totalitarianism. In his floor speech, he also quoted Lindsey Graham talking about how you want a lawyer, you don't get a lawyer, you shut up, and how repugnant that is to the Constitution. Someone who took an oath to uphold it. That's breaking Ron Paul news. Of course, he also left the campaign trail to vote against the debt ceiling. Now, uh, coming up, we have two guests. Uh, that's Ted Anderson with GCN Live, uh, owner of the network. He's going to talk about the spike in gold price of the Ron Paul campaign. We also have Kay Beach of Axiom for Liberty to talk about the Ron Paul delegate process and how important that is. Uh, but first, we have more video from Alex highlighting the incredible importance of introducing a bill to repeal what is just a constitutional destroying Bill of Rights nullifying uh, act that's been written into so-called law. There is a fight taking place, not just here in the United States, but worldwide, between special interest mega corporations that buy and sell our politicians who want to bring in a worldwide corporate tyranny and against free populations across this globe. And the United States, that's always been an example of liberty and freedom to the world, is now an example of corruption, torture, and secret arrest. Now, as you know, Congress passed in December and Obama signed on December 31st, 2011, the National Defense Authorization Act that allows the secret arrest of U.S. citizens, the secret torture. You can disappear forever. And people say, well, where's Bob? Well, where's Carol? We don't know. Maybe they disappeared. You better keep your mouth shut or you'll disappear. Even the worst dictatorships in modern history don't put this type of evil on paper. And now Mitt Romney's come out and said he agrees with it. And they try to spin it that it's, quote, for terrorists, but the legislation says it's for U.S. citizens. Well, Ron Paul is striking back today. He took time off the campaign trail where he's a strong second now nationwide, even with the traitor establishment dinosaur prostitute media saying he can't win. He's swimming upstream like a salmon uh, against their lies, showing how the dinosaur media is losing more and more of his credibility with the public. And he went back to Congress and introduced legislation to repeal the draconian provisions of the National Defense Authorization Act, the secret arrest and disappearance of citizens, the worldwide declaration of war without Congress, uh, the end of posse commentatus. He has got a piece of legislation that stands against that. And the headline on Infowars.com is Ron Paul introduces legislation to strike NDAA's unconstitutional sections. This is so important to get this out to everybody. The fact that both parties and all the other candidates, Obama and the other four Republicans, totally support this and are competing with each other to promote war shows the dangerous straits that this country is in. And they've got a lot of other scary legislation like the SOPA legislation introduced that is an admitted selective internet kill switch without due process. Something good has come out of all this bad though. With the SOPA and the IP Act and the NDAA and all of this and TSA now at checkpoints on the highway and naked body scanners at the shopping malls and in New York on the streets, 
It's really waking people up. Folks, I wish this stuff wasn't true. But I discovered this plan to militarize the police and use the military against us 14, 15 years ago when I was kind of a mainline libertarian Ron Paul type talk show host. And people said, oh man, I talk about wild stuff over the years. It's because wild stuff is going on. And I saw it being developed behind the scenes. Now it's coming out in the open because the worldwide economy is being imploded by design. Before I cover some of this news, one other issue. You know, uh, 80 plus percent of the oil that's developed in Alaska by federal law is shipped out to Asia. We don't get it. Uh, but some deals were struck with Canada to start shipping oil in a pipeline through Illinois down to Texas. Oil we need. And Obama uh, signed an order today saying that's canceled. Not even letting free market bring us oil and, and lower our uh, dependency on the Middle East. It's the globalists. They want to destroy our economy. They want a post-industrial world. They're not just destroying our Bill of Rights and Constitution. It's monopoly men. They want to consolidate power. Now, let me uh, show you uh, some of these uh, articles here, some of these uh, top stories. Uh, here is one uh, right here. For whatever reason, my camera is not focusing, but um, you can see it right there. Ron Paul introduces uh, legislation to strike NDAA's unconstitutional sections. And again, there it is uh, right there on the site. There's other incredible news where AMA uh, Journal is talking about making participation in vaccine trials uh, mandatory. Uh, there's all of that, but let me show you what's going on uh, over at the Drudge Report. If you go to the Drudge Report, he's linked, drudgereport.com, he's linked to two of our articles. Uh, NYC moves to deploy body scanners on street in search for guns. And then there's another one here where the TSA had said they were going to test their employees for radiation, but now they say uh, that they're not going to do this. This is part of a long-term pattern uh, that they have engaged in over and over again where they say, we're going to stop groping people under 12. And then they keep doing it. Or we don't have any radiation coming out of our scanners. Why, John Hopkins says that there is no radiation. And it turns out, of course, there is, and they're lying. It's all part of their deception. But this is just some of the news that we're tracking, some of the things that are developing. It's all at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Please get this out to everybody and support Ron Paul in trying to repeal the unconstitutional, constitution-killing provisions of the NDAA. Support Congressman Ron Paul, even if you don't support him for president. For heaven's sakes, support him in trying to restore the Constitution. We'll be covering it more on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'll also be on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie tonight covering NDAA. This is the future of the free Internet. The internet as we know it, if we don't stop the SOPA, PIPA, and all the other related piracy and copyright legislations. Uh, think about the info war. I mean the long info war. And take this opportunity. Don't waste it. We either use the freedom we have on the internet or we're going to lose it. We have a brief window of time to resecure our liberty and fight back this police state. Now, throughout history, it's always been an info war. We had the Dark Ages, and before that, overt slavery. The whole rise of written language was from the get-go an information war because knowledge is power. It was confined to the priests and, and uh, royalty classes, and the people did not even have literacy. Now, here today in the 21st century, most of us in the Western world still have that gift of literacy, and for a very small window of time left, we also have the freedom of the Internet. How are we going to use it? Are we going to join together? As you probably know, many websites, including Wikipedia, including Google, and hundreds of other websites blacked out today in protest of this legislation targeting online freedom giving governments the ability to shut down websites on a whim in a Chinese-style security police state. So just think about that and look at the police state they've built for our future and how they've already declared America and the whole world as a battlefield against the people. And ask yourself, what are you going to do about the Internet? Now, in particular, uh, this kind of legislation would target 
all the independent alternative news websites. And Mike Adams at Natural News has written about this. SOPA and PIPA bills could threaten natural health websites with government-ordered shutdown. And he gets into all the details of how specifically the dissent at Natural News against vitamin C policies and, and papers saying that natural sunlight's dangerous, along with everything else against the chemicals, the vaccines, and the rest of it would make it an automatic target uh, for the government to shut down. In addition, the Drudge Report this website, Infowars.com, Lou Rockwell's website, you name it, user-driven websites like Reddit, all of them would come under fire, and places like Wikipedia and Google would have even less autonomy if the government got its hands on this bill the way it wants to. Now, they've shelved the SOPA bill, but they still have the PIPA bill, and they're going to bring back to life uh, the Stop Online Piracy Act that so many people on the web already protested against. They went after the sponsors of the bill, including GoDaddy, and had a big victory there, but it's not over. Paul Joseph Watson writes about the secret behind SOPA, and that is, in short, it's an effort to reinstate, to, to model on Communist China's internet censorship clampdown. And we have a clip here from Joe Lieberman talking about how great this would be. In, in catastrophic cases, not going to do it every day, not going to take it over. So I, I say to my friends on the Internet, relax. Right now, China, the government, can disconnect parts of its Internet in the case of war. We need to have that here, too. Now, you also have the former Senator Chris Dodd, who, once he left the Senate, immediately became president of the Motion Picture Association. He, too, has lobbied heavily for SOPA and PIPA. He also said the bill was modeled on China and their firewall, their great firewall against the world. And uh, Paul Watson just goes on to discuss how they're going to seize websites for whatever pretext they want, and you'll have virtually no recourse under the, the drafts of these bills. And what's likely to come out. Furthermore, they are pushing for a national strategy for trusted identities in cyberspace. It's going to be a big uh, a keychain for all your access on the web. It'll be tied to all your personal information, your tax records, all of it, your, your web history and the whole deal. And that is where this is aimed. We've already seen what happens in China. And if you don't want that here, like I said, you better think strongly about what this info war is all about. It really is an information war, and we're in a special time. We really are. Now, meanwhile, there's even more grotesque moves in New York City to deploy body scanners on the street in an effort to search for illegal guns. Kurt Nemo's article describes how the New York Police Commissioner Ray Kelly uh, is looking to deploy terahertz imaging detection scanners on the streets uh, to see if you supposedly have an illegal gun, uh, never mind the Second Amendment, which says nothing shall bar, no legislation shall go against having a gun, uh, he says it would only be used in, quote, reasonably suspicious circumstances, although the, uh, the predating alternative to this is the stop and frisk, which are already considered against the Fourth Amendment. So how does looking under people's clothes with a wave scanner uh, somehow okay to do? I don't know. That's another question. The ACLU and other civil rights groups have already flagged this and called it a virtual pat down by the police department. But, of course, they'll push forward and make you believe guns are illegal and all of it. Meanwhile, the TSA, where body scanners have been used for years, uh, says it's not planning to actually test employees in regards to radiation, even though they've had all kinds of studies, the John Hopkins studies, all kinds of doctors come forward saying this stuff is dangerous. They even had a study back in 1998 showing that many of these types of body scanners could be causing already as many as 100 deaths per year. Here, they have updated reports discussing how, yeah, this is going to kill people. Despite numerous reports this week suggesting the TSA is to buy equipment to test employees for radiation exposure, the agency itself says it has no intention of doing so. Of course, back in November, John Pistole reneged on a promise to the Senate to instigate further studies into the safety of the radiation firing body scanners. Of course, they broke at all kinds of promises, including not to grope children under 12. They had to go back and forth on that several times and all the rest of it. It's a criminal organization, and I guess we're just going to give them more and more power till they shut down the Internet completely. 
In other news, in the Ron Paul scene, his campaign is suing the anti-huntsman YouTube video makers, uh, yet, as yet unnamed, the suits against John Doe's plural, uh, as they will obviously be finding out who's behind the video, that attempt to uh, desecrate the name of Ron Paul and undermine his campaign and otherwise tarnish the reputation by portraying a video that crudely attacked John Huntsman, now out of the race, uh, as being a Ron Paul campaign video. So we'll see how that develops. Of course, it's primarily a warning to anyone else who plans to uh, smear his name that he's not going to take it lying down. That's good. Ron Paul should fight back. He has every right to get his message out, and they do all they can to black out and censor his name. You know, before they did the black out the internet, they did a you can't black this out Ron Paul campaign because his name had been left out of so many reports, polls, uh, you know, graphics where they otherwise maybe mentioned his name at the bottom of the article but refused to feature him like the other candidates. And who is Ron Paul anyway? Patrick Henningsen at InfoWars has Ron Paul versus the rest uh, describing the sea change that's happening in 2012 as uh, the old guard, including neocons and others, are losing much of their sway. We have a clip now of William Crystal uh, getting chewed out here. Richard in Independent Clearwater, Michigan. Morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Crystal and America, stop lying about Ron Paul. There is a revolution going on in this country. This is restoring individual liberty. Talk about the issues for crying out loud. He wants to end the Federal Reserve and give us sound money. He wants to end the undeclared and unconstitutional wars. What's he voted. On? Didn't he vote? Didn't he say last night that he no. voted for one of those wars? You know, no. Listen to me. He voted for the authority to get bin Laden. That was not the authority to go into Iraq. And besides, don't demagogue the issue. We're talking about personal freedom and liberty. You're, you neocons are done. Go away. America doesn't want you anymore. Fox News lies. Your propaganda is a disgrace to the republic. Give us a break. All right, Richard. Bill Crystal. I think this is a country of liberty, and I don't think we need Ron Paul to bring us back our liberty. I actually am a big critic of the Federal Reserve, and I'd be happy that I've even, I'm even... All right, all right, turn off Crystal. And of course, those kind of call-in shows are great to show the anger of the people. Crystal himself, his father, was an actual Marxist, the whole neocon movement, kind of proto-neo-Marxist itself. So it's not like they're conservatives or have some legitimate say in the kind of party that the real people want. Now, Ron Paul himself grew up from humble origins, worked hard all his life. Uh, but who's the other so-called leader, uh, the uh, anointed one to get the GOP nomination, Mitt Romney? How did he grow up? Let's take a look at another video that shows some of that. Mitt spent his time in the private sector working for consulting and investment companies, many times buying out companies, firing all their workers, and selling off the assets. Oh, sure, some people lost their jobs, but Mitt sure did make a lot of money. He was really good at making money. In fact, I guess you could say that he liked doing that more than just about anything. He was so good at making money that he's worth over $250 million now. So you know he can really relate to the rest of us. Well, the rest of us that are worth a quarter billion dollars anyway. Mitt Romney's co-workers really liked him a lot because he always put making money above everything else and they all got really rich too. Just look at how happy they all are with all that money. Ron Paul spent his time in the private sector as a doctor, an OBGYN to be exact. He delivered over 4,000 babies. Ron Paul's co-workers and patients loved him too, not because he made them all rich, but because he routinely provided discounted and free care to those who couldn't afford it. He even refused to accept Medicare or Medicaid as payment, choosing instead to work for free. Silly Ron, he could have made a whole lot more money if he didn't have all those principles. All right, boys and girls. I th and of course, there's no doubt whatsoever who the candidate of the people is, but we're up against this whole crony capitalist system. And that's why uh, the Tulsa, Oklahoma Grassroots Ron Paul Campaign Office has written a recent article, How to Get Ron Paul Elected. And it's all about how as great as the general 
vote is, the popular vote. The real fight is for the delegates. A lot of those delegate spots, especially at the local and state level, are open and they're just waiting for someone to show up, sign their name, and become that delegate, become a Ron Paul delegate. And with more on that now, we turn to Kay Beach. She's a full-time activist, uh, partially associated with the website ronpaulok.com, also a radio host at axiomforliberty.com, and has been active in the 2008 and 2012 Ron Paul campaigns. Kay, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, we were talking beforehand about how there's the popular vote, that's one thing, but the real fight for the presidential elections, or any election for that matter, is at the delegate level. That happens at the local and state level. That's right. And in, in fact, I mean, of course you should be out there voting at your primary, but as we all know, in order for Ron Paul to win the presidency, he has to get the nomination from the GOP. What a lot of people don't know is how does he get how does he get that nomination? And this is where the delegates come in. And this is where the grassroots Ron Paul supporters are absolutely critical because it's the delegates that vote for the nomination for GOP. And if he doesn't get that, he can't be president. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about is the delegate process. Yeah, and of course, we know just for starters here in the 2012 primary, Iowa, he got nearly as many delegates, possibly even more, uh, due to the actual process that goes on then, Romney or Santorum. And so it's really not about who the media anoints as, as the uh, nominee to be, Mitt Romney, uh, although that does have an important effect, but it's really all about the delegates. So let's, let's focus on some of the details then. Well, and, and, and I'm most familiar with Oklahoma. These rules and the processes, even the terminology, will vary somewhat from state to state. Um, the most important thing you can do, of course, is get plugged in with other Ron Paul, uh, other Ron Paul supporters on the meetup, like go to meetup.com and find the other Ron Paul supporters in your state, and we help each other out. But in Oklahoma, for example, and this is true in every state, the first thing is you have to be registered to vote, of course. In Oklahoma, uh, for example, because it's a closed primary state, you have to be registered to vote and you have to have you have to be registered Republican. Only Republicans can vote for other Republicans in Oklahoma's primaries. Not that way in every state. So the very first order of business, of course, of being registered to vote. And then the very next thing is to find out what precinct you're in. Um, you can look on your voter card or you can call your county election board and find out it's a number, what precinct you're in. And your precinct is the, the locality right around you. In other words, when you go to the polls to vote, uh, the people that are there voting at that same polling place, those are people in your precinct. So it's a neighborhood size, you know, usually not more than 2,000 people are in the precinct. That's what a precinct is. So after you are registered to vote and you have all that taken care of, you find out what precinct you're in, and then you want to find out, and this is the critical part, and, and what I want to say right now, I want to stress this, it is the delegates that choose the nominee. So, of course, Ron Paul has to have delegates. The first step in that process is going and finding out where, when your precinct meeting is, your GOP precinct meeting is. In Oklahoma, these precinct meetings are starting the first week in February. How do you find these things out? Well, of course, you can go to your GOP website, but you want to go to meetup.com, get connected with Ron Paul. People connect with the national uh, campaign for Ron Paul. In Oklahoma, you can go to ronpaulok.com. We'll be posting all of that information there. So get registered to vote. Make sure you're registered Republican. Find out your precinct. Then you find out where and when your precinct meetings are. And the most important thing of all, 90% of winning in politics is about showing up behind in the seat. So you have to be there and you have to talk to every Ron Paul supporter you know and let them know about the delegate process so we can get him elected to president. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk scenario here because there's already been bantering about could there be a brokered convention? What would happen if Ron Paul or any other candidate for that matter stayed in the race even when they weren't uh, leading outright with delegates? Well, what, what would we see happen in the Tampa National Republican Convention? Well, as I understand it, you know, there's been some rule changes um, with the GOP in how they apportion delegates. I, I don't think it's a bad rule change. It seems like a fair rule change. but. This rule change, which actually apportions delegate by percentage rather mm -hmm. than winner take all, um, makes it a lot more likely that it could be a brokered convention. 
Right. And in any event, but especially in the event of a brokered convention, it, how many delegates Ron Paul has there is everything. It's, I, it couldn't be more crucial. And even more so now since we've had these rule changes. So, Kay, what kind of scenarios could we see at the brokered convention? Would it be Ron Paul uh, vying for a vice presidential slot? Would it be arguing over policy and platform positions? Or, or what, what's happened in the past at brokered conventions? As I understand it, it is a huge negotiating process. Uh, it's been described to me as part horse trading. And, uh, and, and this is a situation I think uh, most Ron Paul people will understand how critical it is for them to be there. The one thing you can say about the Ron Paul people, I know for a fact, those guys aren't going to trade away anything. They're not going to trade away their vote. They're not going to negotiate and sell out on Ron Paul, which is one thing I fear that may make the battle for the delegates a little bit harder this time around because the brokered convention is is a distinct possibility so yes policy positions uh positions uh for you know vice president whatever i'm sure all of those things are on the table and there'll be a whole lot of lot of trading going on well, it'll be interesting to watch. One thing is for sure, uh, Ron Paul has had himself heard. The people now know who he is and generally what he stands for, and they're still learning more. Uh, so in that sense, it's a victory just by competing. And for the delegates, showing up is a victory by competing as well. Uh, so thanks for giving us the scoop on that, and we'll speak to you again in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks. And we go now to break, but don't go anywhere because in this break, you're going to see the premiere of a new video Alex shot that I worked on uh, overnight last night. Uh, it's going to be on YouTube later. It is Resistance is Victory, and we are winning. Alex breaks down some of the key victories we've had just in about the last year or so. Uh, just a few of them or many more we could have dealt with as well. Just to let you know, we are having an effect in this global fight and we need to continue to do so. So check out that video now and we'll be back in a few moments. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Resistance is victory. That simple initial decision to stand up and to get involved and to take action is the most important decision you can make because from that, flows all other major actions in the fight for freedom and human dignity worldwide. But you first got to get angry, you've got to get focused, and you've got to get engaged. The world is at a crossroads. We have a decision to make. No one can deny anymore that tyranny is growing and casting its long, dark shadow across not just the United States, but worldwide. But in the midst of all of this, and as we uh, move deeper into 2012, it is important to realize the incredible successes, complete and partial, that we've had against tyranny. These are just a few in the last year. In fact, after you're done watching this video, I would ask you to post comments with points that you believe have been victories so we can make a part two video. But here are just some of them. The SOPA bill, or Stopping Online Piracy Act, uh, which is really just a Trojan horse, as the inventors of the internet and many others uh, went public and uh, documented, to shut down free speech and to allow giant corporate monoliths uh, to basically carve up the internet and uh, take it over for their own uses and shut down their competition. But you saw the GoDaddy protest, uh, that caused hundreds of thousands of their uh, customers to leave them. Many of the big uh, internet companies and, and, and smaller ones as well, led by Reddit and others, uh, saying that they were going to basically black out their websites uh, to protest the fact that this SOPA bill is a free speech uh, killing system. And now, because of the actions that you and others took, the system, who just a few weeks ago was very arrogant and said, resistance is futile, we're going to pass this, we've got hundreds more votes than we need in the House. Suddenly it's crumbled, and they're saying, okay, we're shelving it for now. And they hope that later you'll go back to sleep, that they can repackage their lies and bring it back forward. But the point here is, when we take action, and when the people stand up for basic fundamental rights, the system, and the oligarchs that control it are brought to their knees. 
show a big victory in early 2012 against something the system told us was a foregone conclusion. They don't just stop there trying to craft our reality. They've told us for a year that Ron Paul cannot win, that no one would vote for him, that he wasn't even a real candidate, that there was no way he could ever come in third, fourth, fifth place, much less second in New Hampshire, and a statistical dead heat in Iowa. But despite the entire dinosaur whore media, the zombie control media telling you he can't win and excluding him from debates and giving him 89 seconds in other debates and all the demonization and all the dirty tricks and everything they've got being thrown at Ron Paul, he is growing in the polls nationwide and is a very strong second place. Even if he loses, even if they engage in election fraud, we all win because real issues are being injected and a movement for liberty worldwide is growing. Ron Paul and all of us that support him aren't just an example for freedom here in the U.S. There are movements sprouting up all over the world. We are offering the alternative to the crony capitalist anti-free market monopoly men that run our government and other major governments who are trying to shut down the true free market and destroy our private property. Ron Paul and his resistance and our support of him is victory. Let me move to some of the other big victories we've had in the last few months. All over the United States, from California to Florida, but also in Canada and Europe and the United Kingdom, major cities and towns are removing the toxic waste, sodium fluoride, and other byproducts from their water supplies. One county in Florida has a million residents in it, and the city council overwhelmingly, after seeing the scientific evidence, moved to remove the toxic brain-altering chemical from the water supply. Huge victory. For more than 60 years, globalist corporations, in a bid to reduce fertility, chose bisphenol A as a key ingredient in most plastics to reduce fertility. There were literally thousands of other formulae that didn't have the estrogen mimicker in it. But now, 60 years later, all over the world, Businesses, corporations, restaurants are advertising that they have bisphenol-free products. Whether it's baggies for food or furniture or clothing, this is another example of a human awakening taking place. And in just a matter of a few years, public protest and voting with your dollars has overturned one of the main globalist tools of chemical control. Medical tyranny that was used in Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, and here in the United States is on the run. Citizens all over the place are demanding now that dangerous high fructose corn syrup linked to diabetes and so many other diseases be removed. Major brands aren't even offering high fructose corn syrup versions. You go to the grocery store and it's, we're regular sugar or we're stevia. Another huge victory that humanity is having against the medical tyrants who are putting these Trojan horse compounds into our food and water as top globalists like Bertrand Russell promised they would do. But it gets even better. I've seen national studies where the higher the education level, like in areas in Northern California, the lower the vaccine rate is. Parents everywhere are realizing how dangerous vaccines are. And they're learning that in most cases, it doesn't even protect their children from the supposed pathogen that the vaccine gives you immunity for. And so all over the world, not just in the United States, people are waking up and actually reading what is in the ingredients list of vaccines. On the carbon tax issue, one of the most important agendas for the New World Order, we are seeing amazing victories. Since the climate gate emails came out and the public saw the fact that the UN was only trying to set up a excuse to monitor and control all human activity and literally tax breathing and tax carbon dioxide that plants live off of, since that came out, all of their major conferences have failed and more and more scandals and frauds have come out. Congress and the courts are overturning President Obama's attempt to shut down our energy supply and move our jobs to China. The carbon tax hoax and the scam of modern environmentalism is in deep trouble. And remember, that's a good thing 
because the globalist eugenicists don't want you concerned with real environmental issues like genetically engineered organisms and GMO and toxic waste they put in your water. Congress has overthrown the light bulb ban of President Obama. Sure, the bureaucracy's lawless, so they're continuing on with it. But they're going to end up being defeated in the end because the people are becoming wise to them. They've now learned that General Electric had the patent for their dangerous mercury-filled light bulbs and just simply wanted you to buy their new product so you could sit under headache-inducing fluorescent light bulbs all day instead of the pleasing yellow or white light of phosphorescent. The globalist Humpty Dumpty has had a great fall, and all the propagandists and all the New World Order stooges and all the media whores can't put him back together again. And that's my next point. Depending on which poll you look at, Congress has a 9 to 11 percent approval rating, the lowest it's been in history. And they've had that rating for two years now. They know the public's awake to them. They know the public knows they're a pack of criminals. They know the people are waking up. And think about being the so-called mainstream media. It's their job to lie for this group of certified criminals who are admittedly up there engaging in insider trading and serious crimes every single day of the week. But not only is the old dinosaur globalist propaganda media dying, the alternative media is becoming the new media. And it's a thousand different flavors of true diversity and debate. And out of this college of discussion, the public is developing an amazing taste and a smell and a palate for what's real news and what's real information. The jig is up. The question is, how will these tyrants try to suppress this awakening? That's another big victory. The fight more and more is now out in the open and Congress has the lowest approval rating in history. And that leads me to a report where the media is bemoaning the fact that Congress didn't get very much done and there's incredible gridlock. As if them passing thousands of new laws and regulations and new agencies every year is a good thing. If you read what the founding fathers said, gridlock is good. That's why they created three branches of government. So that it's not easy to pass things. It's not easy to do things. So that a dictator can't quickly take over the society. The New World Order's honeymoon to just ram through whatever they want in the name of public interest is over. The people are awake and are just beginning to pay attention. And that takes us to the National Defense Authorization Act. Some would say, well, it's not a victory that it passed. And overall, it's not. But we will snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Notice that they had to come out and say that it didn't affect citizens at first in an attempt to kill opposition to the bill. Then when it came out that it did allow the secret arrest and disappearance and black bagging of citizens, Obama said, don't worry, I'll veto it. Again, a desperate attempt to kill public opposition. And they didn't want this to become a political issue. They just wanted to declare themselves emperors and above the law without scrutiny. Then once Congress passed it, as we told you he would, Obama signed it in the late hours of December 31st, 2011, when they thought no one was paying attention. The fact that they try to sneak this stuff through, the fact that they try to deny that it affects citizens shows that they're weak. They're scared of the public. They know you're awake. So they want these new powers so they can quietly train the police and military that what they're doing is kosher, that what they're doing is acceptable, that what they're doing is constitutional. They want to do it in secret and in the dark because they know that I'm here and Ron Paul is there and countless others are there like you out there watching, exposing what they're doing. You see, by the tyrants now ramming this through, they've woken up more people with this issue than I've ever seen. And so the old saying, the best way to take down a dictator is make him act like a dictator is certainly ringing true here. I want to close with two points. State nullification, 10th Amendment. The feds could pass a law declaring Obama or Mitt Romney God, but you can't legalize tyranny. And it's built into the Constitution. It's why we have states that when the federal government gets out of control, the states can get together and basically veto what the feds have done. States can do it as groups or they can do it individually. 
And that's what the Ninth and Tenth Amendment are all about, and that's happening right now. You know, you've got the jury box, you've got the grand jury box, uh, you've got the courts, you've got all these different checks and balances, but you've also got the cartridge box. And in conclusion, I don't want to go to the cartridge box. My God, our ancestors did that. It was a bloody seven-year war against the greatest empire the world had ever seen. But you know what? We had right on our side and we won. We had ideas that were more powerful than King George III's ideas. He had the big state, the pomp, the power, the tax assessor, the home invaders, people coming to your home without warrants, people shaking you and your wife down, people frisking you on the highway while you're riding your horse. We had the idea of basic freedom and due process and liberty and it won out. But in just the month of December, last year, there were 1.5 million instant checks through the FBI. And the government itself estimates that there's more than 2.1 guns sold for every FBI instant check that's made. And that's not even counting private sales of guns at flea markets and neighbor to neighbor, grandpa to grandson. So you're looking at more than three million guns an all-time record that were purchased in just the month of December. And I saw a survey where they were asking people, why are you buying guns? And they said, number one, I don't trust the government. Number two, I think we're gonna have an economic collapse and civil unrest. So if the globalists think they got the jump on the American people, think again. Millions of Paul Revere's here in the United States and across the world have already warned the public. And a lot of people laughed at them. A lot of people laughed at myself and Ron Paul, but now that everything we talked about is unfolding, our credibility is skyrocketing. We have never been at a more important juncture in human development. Tyranny is coming in like a flood, but the spirit of liberty is raising up men and women everywhere as a standard against this corruption. All of us have to speak out and be involved now like never before. We're having victories every time we stand up and get involved. You have incredible power. That's why the tyrants always tell you that you're powerless, because the opposite is true. The only way these criminals can run our lives, the only way these social engineers can play games with us like they're God, is if we lay down in the ditch and do nothing. 2012 is the year that the resistance goes to the next level. It is the beginning of the end of the eugenicist New World Order. And this is Aaron Dykes again back from break. We have Ted Anderson coming up, but right now some more news. Iran threatens to torpedo U.S. aircraft carriers. Paul Joseph Wasson has the story. A senior Iranian military commander has warned that Iran has the capability to sink U.S. aircraft carriers in the Persian Gulf using detection evading submarines that can fire torpedoes. Lieutenant Commander of the Iranian Army's Self-Sufficiency Jihad, Rear Admiral Farad Armiri, said, stated that the Iran submarines are able to ambush and hit enemy vessels, especially U.S. aircraft carriers from the seabed throughout the Persian Gulf, according to the FARS news agency. Of course, more uh, just sabering towards war, tensions very high on all sides of the coin, and we hope things just simply don't go there. Meanwhile, Obama has said no on the oil pipeline, said he didn't like the legislation, wants to hear more about the environmental impact. Not that he's against the oil oil pipeline that would bring, you know, in the wars and, and bring back production, at least to the North American continent from Alaska oil up there through Canada. Of course, he signed the NDAA legislation when he didn't like that bill, but he won't sign the oil pipeline deal. Uh, that story is something to keep an eye on. Meanwhile, Fukushima radiation spreads worldwide. All those conspiracy theorists were right as California, Finland, Canada, Australia, and many others hit by radiation. Uh, the University of California, Berkeley has detected cesium levels in San Francisco area well above EPA limits and even higher than they were six months ago. And it goes on to describe the impact in all the other can uh, countries. Uh, premature infant deaths are up because of Fukushima. Thyroid cancers are also mysteriously up in the U.S. And a whole lot more. We've had on expert Chris Busby on this topic, but now it's really coming home to roost, isn't it? Even as in Japan, they still say they have it under control, even as they're about to... 
uh, open drill into the containment vessel to try to find where the missing nuclear fuel has gone? What? Danger, anyone? Meanwhile, the AMA Journal says, make participation in vaccine trials mandatory. The article written by Oxford University's Suzanne Sheehy and Joel Myers is entitled, Should Participation in Vaccine Clinical Trials Be Mandated? Many societies, they say, already mandate that citizens undertake activities for the good of society. In several European countries, registration for organ donation has switched from the opt-in current U.S. system to opt-out systems, where only those who specifically don't want to register uh, would do so and all others would be in. Most societies expect citizens to undertake jury service we called upon. In other examples, the risk of inconvenience to an individual, usually limited and minor, Mandatory involvement in vaccine trials is therefore perhaps more akin to military conscription, a policy operating in 66 countries in both conscription and ob obligatory trial participation. Individuals have little or no choice regarding involvement. So we're all just supposed to be guinea pigs. And the other thing is they already tried this argument back in 1927. It was a farce. It was pseudoscience. It was under eugenics. Supreme Court Chief Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes tried to claim that the same principle that supported compulsory sterilization was the same one that supported compulsory vaccination. Let me give you a little hint as to what that principle is. It's nothing. It doesn't exist. It's unconstitutional. It's against the natural law and the rights of man. Meanwhile, gold is expected to hit $2,000 an ounce. That, according to a new Thomson Reuters report, predicting another rise after last September saw $1920, $1,900 for gold per ounce. Among other reasons for it, the coming QE3 quantitative ease and the continuing economic shocks. Today's gold price is 16.60. We turn now to GCNlive.com founder and owner and Midas Resources owner Ted Anderson to talk about everything going on with gold. Ted, for, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me up again, Aaron. Yeah, so uh, we've both been looking at the London Guardian headline, gold price to hit $2,000 an ounce. Uh, tell us your outlook on this. Well, I mean, I'm reading the same article, and they're talking about possibly that we've seen the end of this uh, this gold run that we've had, but n not hardly. I mean, I can tell you right now, central banks have accumulated 430 tons of gold to their position. These are the countries that make and manufacture currencies, and they're betting on the fact that gold is going to go up. There are parts in this article, they're talking about $2,000 an ounce uh, this year, I wouldn't doubt it a bit. I mean, we right now presently are seeing a lot of uh, European countries, of Europeans themselves, running to U.S. dollar, U.S. treasuries to be exact. And that's why we've seen the increase in the dollar from about 68 to $80.50 where it is right now. But at this particular point, China is selling their treasuries. They're taking advantage of this because they're the, they've been the big lenders to the United States. We've been living off of them for the last uh, 30 years, and now they're looking at this as an opportunity to reduce their holdings. And mm -hmm. so I can tell you right now, the central banks aren't betting on the fact that gold is going down. I don't think that China's betting right now on the fact that gold is going down. As a matter of fact, they're net buyers. I mean, Korea, for goodness sakes, for the first time since 1998, have bought gold, Central Bank of Korea, I should say. It's not the government of Korea, but the Central Banks of Korea. Well, of course, uh, as you know, gold went to 1920 an ounce last September. That was in the midst of QE1 and QE2. And part of this article says they're expecting QE3 to come around. They've kind of been doing intermediate QE3 as well, quantitative easing. What will that do to gold's outlook, Ted? Well, quantitative easing is going to drive gold prices up. I mean, we've seen last time around when they tried, of course, TARP and the bailouts there, gold went from about $600 an ounce to $1,000 an ounce. When QE1 came out, we saw gold go from 1000 to about 1200 QE2 all the way up to $1,900 an ounce, and now they're talking about QE3. I mean, it's obvious. That's printing money. It's creating debt. It's increasing our, our, our liabilities and increasing money supply. The foreigners, the foreign markets are going to look at that as a as a as another death knell in the United States dollar, and so are people domestically. They start quantitative easing again. We're going to see gold go up, silver as well. 
And this article kind of rosily points to that gold prices might not run, you know, that this bull run may end if the economies around the world improve. Uh, but obviously, if you read between the lines, they're not expecting a great improvement in the economy. Things are clearly only getting worse. You can see that with the central banks. So I, I have to tell you, the central banks know more than anybody else what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. They have the ability to create money. They have the ability to adjust interest rates, make them where they want them to be. They're looking for an economic downturn. They're looking for weakness in the dollar, and that's why they're buying gold and silver. I mean, they've increased their, again, increased their holdings to 430 metric metric tons in the marketplace that's a that's a large increase they're buying gold they're the ones that are make manufacturing the currencies they're betting on the fact that they'll have to print more money to stimulate the economies i don't think we're going to see this big economic increase i mean right now they're voting on another increase in the united states debt they're trying to raise the debt ceiling they, they want more quantitative easing all that spells out more economic problems and i believe that that's what we're going to have and that's why i think the central banks right now are hedging their bet and saying hey we need to get away from the u.s dollar we need to get into gold you know they have the printing press they're able to print as much as they want if the dollar was great they wouldn't necessarily even look at gold but the, they know between each other they can't trust currencies so they have to have gold as a uh, as a as a as a collateralization so their currencies can hold value and that's what's going on shifting gears ted in the presidential election there's one certain candidate who they're always trying to push out of the room because he doesn't go for the world war three thing and he also has common sense on the gold standard on economic issues really foresaw so much of the collapse coming that of course is ron paul it's no secret you've been a supporter of him uh... what kind of outlook do you see for his campaign well, they have a tough battle to hold. There's no question about it. I mean, Romney is really uh, pulling hard in the polls. You can see he's up in the 30% range. Ron Paul gets up into the 20s. It, but the, the bottom line is to have a real, true, solid candidate, somebody that you can rely on, somebody you can trust, you know his position, and he's not going to be bought off by the, uh, by, by the uh, lobbyists and the lobbying groups. I mean, for starters, the reason why there's so much money going into Romney is because there's these super PACs and, uh, you know, fu funded by people like, you know, companies like Goldman Sachs that have just this huge power to buy ads and push Romney up to the top. Romney doesn't even control this thing, but he is the elite. He is the, uh, he is the uh, chosen candidate by the, uh, by, by the establishment, if you will. And Paul is not. Paul's outside of the establishment. They are afraid of Paul. They're afraid of his ideas. And when I, I'm looking at the uh, the donation screen right now for the South Carolina, uh, you know, donor thing, I mean, 1.689244 million dollars have been raised for South Carolina alone. His general fund has probably been over seven million dollars now. I don't know what he's not reporting. It's, it has to be beyond that. And I can tell you, this man is this man is the real deal. Whether or not he's going to become president of the United States, I can't, you know, it's hard to say whether that'll happen. Boy, he has a lot of steam behind him this year. I sure would love to see that happen. But I can tell you, the, uh, the uh, um, establishment uh, is doing anything they can to cut this man down. And you've seen that in the, the debates out in Carolina with the uh, Fox debate that happened here just a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going you're gonna to see... Uh, more of that in the future and 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 again <clears throat> i just don't think ron paul's a great debater but you can you can tell where his heart is and you know where he's going to be voting and uh and if you want to cut back on government spending if you want to get this country in great shape back again where you know to its roots uh rather than uh, rather than running the the value of our currency down to nothing and 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 borrowing our children's future away he's your man yeah, and of course, obviously, he has uh, thankfully caught the ear of the people here in 2012. Not as much success, but growing then in 2008. But the fight's not over for the election either. Uh, I've been reading about a number of the GOP primary states that are no longer winner take all. They're splitting up the delegates proportionally. And I know there's a lot of movements at the local and state level to make sure Ron Paul delegates are in place. Uh, do you foresee some kind of. Uh, uh, Thing going on at the convention where you know it's an actual convention where they go back and forth and, and lobby positions and, and that sort of thing well I, I you know there's gonna be a fight there I, I don't think Ron is gonna drop out of this race um, going into the uh, nomination but I, I can tell you 
uh, it will be, it, 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 we may get down to that, and that, that election may be decided at that convention, at the convention, and, mm -hmm. uh, and the delegates, I mean, for instance, Iowa, Ron Paul probably walked out with most of the delegates, even though the straw poll showed uh, Romney winning the, uh, you know, in the straw poll. Minnesota, I can see the same thing happening. We're, we are a, uh, we're, we're a caucus state where you'll have certain delegates that move on and vote for more delegates until you finally get down to the state convention where they actually decide on who the presidential candidate is going to be. Uh, th there's, there's a battle ahead here. Ron still stands a great chance, and, uh, and I can tell you I'm fighting with him the whole way. Well, that's Ted Anderson, supporter of GCN Live, and money where his mouth is at MidasResources.com. Thanks for joining us, Ted. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me up. Good night. Uh, just remember, government can't save you, it can only enslave you. We go now to our quote of the day. It is from Ron Paul. The gold standard would keep you from printing money and destroying the middle classes. Every country where you have runaway inflation, there's no middle class. Today, we have a growing poor class, and we have more billionaires than ever before. So we're moving into third world status. And that's all for tonight. Of course, I do want to remind you, we have a 15-day free trial for PrisonPlanet.tv. A great chance to take a look, walk around inside Prison Planet TV, see what you get for your money. Alex's live show, three hours plus every day. The InfoWars nightly news, five days a week. All the documentaries, all the special reports, the eBooks, and a whole lot more. Please check it out. We depend on your support to get this message out to as many people as possible so we can restore this republic and end all this nonsense as soon as possible. It's definitely a fight, and we need your help. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.